Last time we showed that all exponents with the subobject classifier as the base object exist in a topos. In this video, we construct exponents for any two objects in a topos. Recall that a topos is a category with finite limits and power objects. Last time we showed this is equivalent to a category with finite limits and a subobject classifier which is baseable. Recall that an exponential object is an object z to the w and a morphism called evaluation from the product x cross z to the w to z such that for any morphism f from w cross y to z there exists this unique factorization h from y to z to the w such that the composition of evaluation and 1 cross h is equal to f. We will use our knowledge of the usual construction of exponentials in the category of sets where the set of maps between two sets is a subset of the power set of a Cartesian product as a guide to how to construct exponents in any topos. So we start by considering sets W and Z. If we operate in any one of the axiom systems for sets such as zermelo frankel or Gerdel von Neumann Bernays, then the set of all set maps from W to Z is the elements F in the power set of the product of Z and W such that 1 for each element w in big W and z in big Z, z w is in f and z prime w is in f implies that z is equal to z prime, and 2 for all elements w and w, there exists an element z in z such that z w is in f. It's conventional to write z is equal to f evaluated on w for the condition that z w is in f. The two conditions ensure that the relation f is uniquely and totally defined on all of w. Since everything in category theory is constructed at the level of morphisms, and assuming that the category of sets should be a topos, we translate conditions 1 and 2 into set maps and then extend this definition to all toposes. Observe that f is a set map if and only if the subset of w consisting of elements little w such that the set of elements z and z such that zw is in f is a singleton set is equal to w. We need to first address how to predicate the condition of being a singleton set. In the category of sets, the singleton map sends an element little z to the singleton set containing the element z. This assignment is clearly an injection and so is characterized by a map sigma sub z from the power set of z to the subobject classifier, which assigns a subset E of z to true if E is a singleton set, otherwise it assigns it to false. So how do we find the singleton morphism and predicate in an arbitrary topos? In any category with binary products, there is a diagonal morphism, delta sub z, induced by the identity morphisms. Since the identity morphism is a monomorphism, the diagonal morphism must also be a monomorphism, and thus in any topos is classified by a morphism lowercase delta sub z. You can think of this as the equality predicate. Then since the subobject classifier is baseable in a topos, we can define the singleton morphism as the exponential adjoint of the equality predicate. In the category of sets, this is the map which sends an element z to the set of elements z prime and z such that z is equal to z prime. Since this condition is only true for the element z, this map is the singleton assignment above. We still need to show this singleton morphism is a monomorphism in a general topos. We have the following lemma. In a topos, for each object z, the singleton morphism on z is a monomorphism. For the proof, we assume there are morphisms f and g from x to z, such that post-composition by the singleton morphism gives us equality. Thus, by taking the exponential adjoint, then we have delta sub z 1 cross f equal to delta sub z 1 cross g. Consider the following diagram. The right-hand square is a pullback by the definition of the diagonal morphism. The left-hand square commutes since the high road and low road both equal the morphism ff from x to z cross z. We want to show that the left-hand diagram is also a pullback. So assume we have morphisms h and j1, j2, such that delta sub z h is equal to 1 cross f j1, j2. We have delta sub z h is equal to h, h, and 1 cross f j1, j2 is equal to j1, f1, j2. 
therefore J1 is equal to H, which is equal to F J2. Hence, the morphism J2 is a unique factorization from T to X, showing that the left hand square is in fact a pullback. Thus, by the pullback lemma, the outer rectangle is a pullback. And therefore, delta sub Z1 cross F, which is equal to delta sub Z1 cross G, is the same predicate, and therefore classifies both the subobject F1 and G1, since in the diagram on the left, every instance of F could be replaced by G showing that these two monomorphisms are the same subobject of z cross x. Since subobjects are determined up to isomorphism, there exists a unique isomorphism k such that g1k is equal to f1, and thus gkk is equal to f1. Thus, k is equal to the identity on x and g is equal to f, completing the proof that the singleton morphism on z is a monomorphism. Then since the singleton on Z is a monomorphism in any topos, we define sigma sub Z to be the characteristic morphism of this singleton morphism on Z. In other words, the following diagram is a pullback. Sigma sub Z should be thought of as a predicate is a singleton in a general topos. We now define V to be the exponential adjoint of the identity on the power object of Z cross W. In the category of sets, this map sends WF to the set consisting of elements Z of Z, such that ZW is in F. Therefore, we are now able to translate the construction of the following set into a predicate morphism in a topos, sigma sub Z V, where V is the construction of the subobject of Z corresponding to the subset Z in Z, such that ZW is in F, and sigma sub Z is the predicate is a singleton. So this is the left-hand side of the equation that characterizes F as a set map above. To complete the condition, we need this subobject of W to be equal to W. The predicate that subobject of W is equal to W is the morphism T sub W, which factors through the generic subobject. Since exponential object Z to the W should be a subobject of the power object of Z cross W, we have to transform the condition above to give us a subobject of P Z cross W. So we let U be the exponential adjoint sigma sub Z V and the naming of T sub W the exponential adjoint of T sub W. We then define the object Z to the W in an arbitrary topos as the pullback of U and the naming of the morphism T sub W. In the category of sets, we see that F is in this pullback precisely when it satisfies the condition that defines F as a map from W to Z. Therefore, this definition is a proper generalization of the construction of the exponential object in the category of sets. However, we still need to define the evaluation morphism and show it enjoys the universal mapping property of an exponential. Again, we look at how to obtain the evaluation map in the category of sets and then generalize. We use the universal mapping property of the singleton morphism on Z as the pullback of sigma sub Z along the generic subobject T. Observe that sigma Z V1 cross M factors through the generic subobject since we have WF taken to the set of Z and big Z such that Z W is in F, which is always a singleton set since F defines a set map. Therefore, the low road is a constant map at true. Then this unique factorization takes WF to F evaluated at W and gives us the evaluation map in the category of sets. Now we need to show that sigma sub Z V1 cross M factors through the generic subobject T in a general topos. So consider the following diagram. The right hand square is a pullback by the definition of the singleton morphism and the characterization morphism sigma sub Z. The middle square commutes by definition of u as the exponential adjoint to sigma sub z v. The left-hand square commutes, since it is the product of w, by the commuting square above given in the definition of the object z to the w, and the bottom rectangle commutes by definition of t sub w. Therefore, the composition morphisms of the two gray paths are equal, inducing the factorization from w cross z to the w to z just as in the factorization given in the diagram on the left. Thus, we define the evaluation morphism in any topos to be this factorization. 
we have left to verify the evaluation morphism enjoys the universal mapping property of exponentials. So let f be a morphism from w cross y to z, then there exists a morphism h from y to the power object on z cross w, which is the exponential adjoint to delta sub z 1 cross f. We then take the exponential adjoint with respect to z on the left to obtain the commuting green square. We compose by the following pullback square, which classifies the singleton morphism. Notice that shriek sub z f is equal to shriek sub w pi sub w, where pi sub w is the projection map, since 1 is the terminal object. We then take the exponential adjoint again to the outside rectangle with respect to w on the left to arrive at the following commuting square. Then by the universal mapping property of the pullback diagram above, which was used in the definition of z to the w, there exists this unique morphism k from y to z to the w such that mk is equal to h. We have left to show that 1 cross k is the unique factorization in the following diagram. So we postcompose by the singleton morphism. We have that the singleton morphism on z evaluation 1 cross k equal to v 1 cross m 1 cross k by definition of the evaluation morphism above. Then this is equal to v 1 cross mk, but mk is equal to h, so this is v 1 cross h. By definition of h, this is the singleton morphism on z f. Then since the singleton morphism is a monomorphism, it cancels from the left, giving us f is equal to the evaluation 1 cross k as desired. And this shows that a topos has exponential objects. So now we can show that the following are equivalent. 1, E is a topos. 2, E has finite limits and a baseable subobject classifier. And 3, E has finite limits, a subobject classifier, and exponentials. Number 3 is equivalent to E being a Cartesian closed category with equalizers and a subobject classifier, which is often the way a topos is defined in the literature.